McLaren's recovery from a team without hope to a true front runner has been one of the standout stories of the 2023 Formula One World Championship so far. We're going to delve inside how they did it. The team arrived in Bahrain for the season opener with the new MCL 60, but they were in a downhearted mood. They'd had a difficult time in pre-season testing, at which CEO Zach Brown had admitted the team had missed some of its pre-season development targets. McLaren's initial car design concept was something of a gamble, a gamble that only one other team opted for, but that team was Red Bull. In 2022, using the concept, McLaren failed to finish the championship in the top four for the first time in three years. But driven by Red Bull's successes, they continued with the approach for 2023. McLaren's MCL60 was very much an evolution rather than a revolution of its troubled predecessor, the MCL36, and it looked a lot like its performances were likely to be a repeat of the previous season's problems. This sentiment seemed to be proven in the season opener in Sakia, as mechanical issues and technical failures blighted the team's race. He's shaking his head, time is dripping away. It looks like it's game over for Piastri. The team was also pointless in Saudi Arabia before a bit of luck and some great driving at the Australian Grand Prix earned Oscar Piastri and Lando Norris their first points of the season. However, heading into Austria, the team introduced a major upgrade package one that generated a huge amount of buzz in the paddock and promised to have a dramatic effect on the team's performance. The Austrian upgrade centred around a redesigned floor, a slimmer engine cover and a completely new side pod design with gullies down each side in a design not dissimilar to that of Aston Martin, who also run the same Mercedes powertrain. The side pod inlet ducts also received a makeover, with a new look rather reminiscent of championship leaders Red Bull. And this new Red Bull inspired shape was made possible by a redesign of the cooling components housed underneath the side pod bodywork. With the push for on track performance, a race against time, the team only had enough spare parts to cover Lando Norris's car in Austria, giving the team and the whole paddock a chance to compare the existing and redesigned MCL 60s side by side on track and it was easy to compare the results. Norris finished the race in fourth, with Piastri a lap down in 16th. Great points for the team. Looking forward to seeing what the upgrade's got next week, so thanks guys for all the hard work getting that new update done. The Australian would be given the first stage of the upgrades for Silverstone, with Norris moving on to stage two at the same race, as the team introduced a new front wing and new nose design to complement the side pod and underfloor upgrades debuted in Austria, and now also fitted to Piastri's car. The updated front wing assembly has featured new elements as well as a reshaped template aimed at increasing downforce, while a new nose assembly was also designed to work in sympathy with the new wing. Meanwhile, at the rear of the car, McLaren changed the design of the winglets mounted on the inner edge of the rear wheels in a further attempt to boost downforce, while the shrouds around the rear suspension arms were reshaped to aid in that effort. The team's increase in performance was clear for all to see as the team qualified an impressive second and third before a fast starting Lando Norris briefly led his and his team's home Grand Prix. You can hear the roars as Lando Norris leads! This is Dreamland and for McLaren! Although eventually second to Max Verstappen and Red Bull, Norris's first podium in over a year signalled McLaren's return to the front end of the field. With Piastri fourth, it was clear up and down the paddock that the team in Papaya were now a serious contender once again. A big thanks to all the, all the British fans out here supporting all of us, also for McLaren. This was cemented at the very next race in Hungary, on a very different type of race circuit. In just a few short races, the team had gone from looking like a no-hope outfit, unlikely to trouble the top half of the Constructors' Championship, to sitting in fifth position, the same position that they finished in at the end of 2022. Having addressed the floor and side pods, then redesigned the front wing to complement that new ethos, the final part of the transformation of the MCL60 came at Zandvoort with a new rear wing, new end plates and a new beam wing, all with the desired effect of improving the car's aerodynamic efficiency further still. 
the car was fitted with a completely new rear wing design, with a new main plane, upper flap and end plate, which all combined to offer much better aerodynamic efficiency. In other words, they increased downforce without increasing aerodynamic drag too much. Alongside this, a new beam wing layout was introduced which aimed to further improve the aerodynamic efficiency of the car. It completed the three-stage program introduced by McLaren, aimed at addressing a number of the problems faced in pre-season testing and during the early part of the year. Of course, the development didn't stop there. Another package of parts was introduced at the Italian Grand Prix. Some of those parts aimed at coping with the very long straights at Monza circuit, while others were aimed at improving the package overall. It's an exciting time to be a McLaren fan at the moment, in a sport where even a tenth of a second improvement per lap is enormous. McLaren's closing of the gap to Red Bull by over a second on relative pace is absolutely huge. Having approached the new regulations with the same ideas as Red Bull, there's a growing feeling that the team in Woking are now truly understanding how to maximise their car's potential. Can they complete their dramatic turnaround to not only challenge to win races, but also to beat the likes of Ferrari and Aston Martin in the Constructors' Championship? Watch this space.